Good evening, everyone, and welcome. This is a Stock Swish Show market review of the QQQs. It is Saturday afternoon. Just got done with day one of the Golden Gap class. I actually got done early today. Uh, I didn't think I was talking that fast, but <laughs> when I get really excited about talking about gaps, sometimes I do tend to talk fast. Anyways, I did talk about the market in the class today and felt inspired. I'm in the teaching mode, uh, so I thought I would do a market review. I do look at the market sometimes on the weekends, not every weekend, and I probably won't look at the market for towards the end of the year that much when I take some days off around the holiday. But I thought I'd look at it now because market did get down on Friday. Let's just look here. Market held all morning, held all day in the queues until the close. This is into the close here. Actually, this doesn't even really count as a break. It retested the low of the day into 4 o'clock. But then after hours, we really broke here after hours. You can see this here. This is the post market. Came down to 102.14. Here we are. Let's go look at the daily chart. This just isn't going to break in here, but this is all the way down here. I mean, this is, you know, this is a dollar thirty away from the close of Friday. So could we continue down on Monday and retest this area? Yes. Are we going to break it? I don't think we do. This is going to hold, in my opinion. What if we do break it? Does it mean we're lower and going to crash like everyone in the world but me is saying? No. I still think we hold this area. Did I think that we would come in the way that we did in here on Friday? No. Does it change anything though? No. Okay. Market rallied all day, broke late in the afternoon and a Friday afternoon, and basically held into the close. Now we did gap down a little bit there, but I don't know what that means for Monday morning. I have to see in the gap. Could we gap down Monday morning? Yes. Could we gap up Monday? Yes. Could we gap neutral? Yes. Are we going to have a big gap up? I don't know. I mean, I just really don't know where we gap on Monday, actually. Well, I won't know until I get up. And I think there's some data out Monday morning, too. I don't remember if it's before 9.30 or after 9.30. I have to go back and look. But the chart's still strong. Still strong. We will still make a new high before the end of the year. I think it is most likely now that we will rally up and make a new high before the end of the year up to 110 in the QQQs. That is a realistic target for the end of 2014. I think 120 now, the way that we've acted in the last three days to get up over that number to make brand new all-time highs in the queues is a stretch by December 31st because we only have two more weeks left in the year. But 110 is very realistic as a target before the end of the year, and there's nothing in here that tells me we're not going to get there. That means another new high in here for the time being and a follow-through higher into 2015. People keep asking me about this. Someone actually emailed me and said that they didn't agree with my market calls all week. But I called the market well all week. I called the market to hold in the gap down here, and it did. I said the market would fall this day, and it did. Didn't even break in here. Said the market would hold this day, and it did. And the market held all day on Friday into here. So I don't know what that person was talking about. It's very easy for people to just be critical of calls I'm making but when they don't understand what I'm doing. So I get that. But it is very, uh, what's the word? It's very progressive for me to be talking in the manner that I am, calling the market to the world out in public on YouTube. It's a very gutsy thing to do. It shows a high level of conviction for me to even do it. 
because I wouldn't say this stuff if I didn't see it or believe it. And I have called the market accurately this year. And I will continue to do so because I know how to trade and I know how to read price action. One of the things that I talked about today in the class was that reading price and the way that it acts is a very, uh, what's the word? That's, that's the closest you could get to perfection. That's a, it is the best way to trade. And that is how I trade. One of the reasons that gaps is a great strategy is because it's, uh, it, it tells you a lot about what's happening in the price of something. What many people are doing that are saying the market's lower, and it's not, okay? Two red bars does not mean the market is going to crash or is lower. It's, I just think it's funny that people just don't understand that. Anyways, uh, what people are doing is they're looking at patterns. I know people play patterns. They play patterns in things that I don't even use. I don't even know what half of them are called. People always name these names like bullish flags and bearish flags and whatever, okay? People play these patterns, but the purest form of what's happening in a stock or the market is, is the mathematical numbers of what's happening in the price action, which has nothing to do with a pattern formation that is a man-made thing that somebody called a flag or an upside down whatever, okay? If you were, if you were a stock and you traded, I, I'm so in touch with the way things trade. That's I can tell when somebody's being bought or sold off or shorted. When you're in, or even just short covering, when you're, if you were part of this stock, if you were in it, if you were dancing around in this, you would just be moving and dancing in numbers. That would be your life. You would know what anyone was talking about in any kind of pattern formation. You would, you would look, you would be inside the stock dancing around or in the market in this ETF. And you would be living in a world of mathematical price action. And you wouldn't, you would, you would look outside of this and you would point at someone that was talking about something and you would, you would say that person's crazy because they would be talking about something that really has nothing to do with their life. Because the only thing that exists here is price. And that's what I'm reading. There's no institutional selling that's happening here. New buying came into the market. It's not going to crash. We'll make a new high this year. My market read has been accurate. And I'm perfectly willing to say if I see something different or if I would ever see something and go back and say, wait a minute, I made a mistake, but that's not happened here. And I keep double checking myself. And how do I do that? I keep writing the gaps. One of the things that gives me an edge in what I do when I take a position in a stock, and I'm not in the market here long, but if I was, one of the things that would hold my conviction and is holding it down to call the market higher into the end of the year, into 2015, is that people are shorting this market. They are not big time institutions. And the fact that I have such an edge to see who's in what, doing what, against what I see, gives me conviction to know what is going to happen next. I don't know if that makes any sense. So there's two things I see. I see what an institution is doing. I can tell that in a gap, bullish or bearish, whether it's follow through or reversal. Then I also see, and I talk to traders all the time. It's a great thing, actually, the fact that I talk to so many people. I talked a lot about the class. And even the people that email me stuff that disagree with me give me a, give me a view into the world of what regular people are doing, which is something that is not what they should be doing. But it tells me that people are in there, in that manner that I know then is something for me to play against. Okay, so it gives me conviction. There's only one winner and there's only one loser in the market. If I taught millions of people, a lot of people, okay, out there 
would still have stuff in their head from things they learned from a million years of training, okay, that they believe work, which is their belief system, which is, this is what's playing out right in here. People's belief system is that the market has to do, has to do, has to do a deep correction and has to come in and has to be topping out. And people believe their belief system is that there must be a big correction here, that this has to be the top, that there must be a deep pull in. Even people that think it's going to go higher believe that it has to, their belief system is that it must do a big correction. That is nothing but their belief system, which is based on no reality of real time live price action. Now, we all have belief systems. We all do, okay? But traders really do. And unfortunately, that's the part of a trader that sometimes they need to let go of. Call it the ego mentality. Call it whatever you want. It's a thing that I see when people critique me because they're not willing to look at what something really is or open up their eyes to learn something new and change. And if you are not making money in the market, then you're doing something wrong. And in order to start to profit, you will need to change and change some of those belief systems. And if you are not willing to do that, if you are so stubborn and egotistical that you're not willing to do it, then you actually would rather just insist that you were right and continue losing. I really don't care about anything other than making money in reference to my trading. And in order to do that, I constantly have to be looking at the information. I constantly have to be looking at the price. I constantly have to ignore everything that's out there so I can be so pure in my read of the price action. Now, the close for Friday was bearish. Will we continue lower Monday? I don't know. Will we break the support area here? I doubt it. If we do, are we bearish? The answer is no. The answer is no. New money came into the market here. New money came into the market here. This is all buying that happened here. The market's higher in 2015. I don't know where the bulls are going to step in again, but I know that they will. And that's why the idea of shorting this market is not the right thing because you're going to lose when the bulls step in. And I don't know where that is. And it could be here. could have been Friday. They stepped in here on the gap down. Okay. This is all people shorting in here. And it followed through here. Now, the queues are holding much better than the SPY. I'll do a SPY video if I have time later this weekend. But the queues have been lagging a little bit from the SPY. It's had a bigger move this year than the, the, the SPY has had a bigger move than the queues this year, which is why the queues are holding stronger in here in the last two weeks or so rather than the SPY. But it's all the same principle. When you are in touch with the pure price action and reading how it acts and reading how it is, this is how I'm able to read the first five minutes of trading of anything to tell what it's going to do on the live day or in the first hour to take a position so aggressively like I do into the open. How am I able so often? I am reading it in the first five minutes of the day and profiting in the moves so quickly. How am I able to do that? Because I'm good at reading price. And there is very few people on the planet at all. I don't know anyone else but me that can read the first five minutes in a stock or the market and determine what it's going to do to take a position for profit. And I can do it. And that says a lot about how I can read something. And it is meaningful along with the overall picture here, but it is price based. And I know that patterns can be played for profit at times over and over. But if there was a set thing that worked as a pattern over, 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 over and again, like a buying a support or shorting a resistance or a flag or this or that, that it would work in every time. What I have found with that people lack is an ability to see beyond what they know, to consider what is the most highest level thing. And it's really just the price. But it, it, the gap tells you that if you know how to read it. If you know how to read it. One of the great things, and I realized this today, I actually wrote it down here because I just spontaneously said it when I was teaching in the class. 
There is an endless sea of opportunity to make a lot of money in the market for profit if you know what to do because there will always be more people that don't than do. Part of it is because for years and years and years there are educational companies out there teaching things in the market that are incorrect. They may believe they're correct. There's a belief systems there that make them think they're correct. Then people are taught incorrect things. Then it, can, then it defines the belief systems of the people that they teach their students. People sometimes make money doing those things. Then they get conviction that it works even though it doesn't consistently. There will always be an endless, endless sea of money to make, an endless opportunity, infinite, infinite opportunity for people to make huge, vast amounts of wealth in the market if they know what to do because there will always be such few people that know what to do. They will be the people like me. This is me on the outskirts talking about stuff that most people don't understand. And, and then there's people that see me and it clicks and they hear what I'm saying and they come to me and learn and those people are the lucky ones. The vast majority of people and the vast majority of what it's taught doesn't work, which is why people see the results of lack of consistency. But it even doesn't dawn on people when they're not consistent that something doesn't work. They always find a rationale or reason to blame it on something else. And because it's taught so widely, they believe something therefore must work. And this example is a prime example of that, what's happening here at the belief system of people in the market, that because the market's rallied for the last over many years, therefore it needs to do a deep correction, and it needs to come in, and it's going to fall, and it has no other option but that, but it's not going to happen. And if I see it happen, I will know in the live moment and then I wouldn't say I made a mistake. I would say we are now in a downtrend and we are now broken and we are now going to fall and we are now going to crash. But none of that is here. Not one bit of a boo. And I just don't see it playing out that way. Because of the new money that's come in, because of the new money that's supporting it, because of commitments that are made and continue to be so. So... <clears throat> 110 before the end of the year in two weeks we're at 102 now that'll be a ten dollar rally from here and we'll stop out the shorts that shorted up there at 106 once again could we not get over that area before the end of the year sure we can do anything but i don't think that's likely it will depend on how we gap on money to see where we go next or what we do or the next level but if you go back and look at my market videos, even when this whole thing was happening, I was doing the videos every day, I said, don't be surprised if we retrace this entire thing almost immediately. That's exactly what happened. It happened in just a few days. And we were scot-free on top of it, booped right over. And the same thing could happen. The same exact thing could happen this week. Because money is so powerful when it steps in. So powerful. That's what I love about the market. And that's why if you're on the right side of it, you just, I mean, the profit you can make is endless. Endless! And the people that have learned from me and, and, and understand what I'm talking about here really, really, really have an edge. Really have an edge. I received a wonderful, beautiful, loving text. I don't have my phone next to me right now. From a prior student last night wishing me happy holidays and said that, his training, you know, he, you know, really owes me a debt of gratitude for the way I've taught him how to trade. I helped him become a good trader and, you know, his goal is to be as good as me someday. And I'm sure he will get there. I'm sure that he, that's what he wants to do. He will. It was a lovely little note. Anyways, have a wonderful weekend, everyone. This is the QQQs. And this is a stock swish market review. Good job today, everyone, in the Golden Gap Day 1 class. This is the last class of the year. And tomorrow we'll do Day 2. If you're interested in still doing the class, the next one's 2015. You can email me if you want more information on those upcoming dates. will be in January. And I will try to do a market review of the SPY 
I don't know if it's today or tomorrow. Might not be till Monday. And we'll really see what the market does into the open on Monday with the gap. Be very interesting. And uh, we'll go from there. Have a great day, everyone. If you're interested in more information on upcoming classes, email me at melissa at thestockswoosh.com and have a wonderful, relaxing Saturday evening.